What is poppin' everybody? My name is Justin Woodward and I'm one of the co-founders of the Mix and Black Voice in Gaming as well as an advisor on the Black Game Developer Fund. Welcome to Black Voice in Gaming. We are going to talk to some creative and talented Black game developers today. It has been a minute, but I am back and helping to host the Black Voice in Gaming stream with my amazing co-hosts. What's happening, guys? What is up? Thank you, Justin. It's always exciting to be here. My name is Derek Fields. I am a game designer, professor, and advisor for Black Voices in Gaming. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to be able to join the two of you on this show. Oh, well, this time the two of you. It usually does. It's me and you, right? So now we've yeah. got Justin with us, which is exciting. Uh, no, again, I'm excited to be here with both y'all. Uh, always excited to uh, get to chat with the developers and see the other people who are contributing to the industry. What about you, Des? Oh my God. Okay, guys, I just want you to know this is our second time doing it. And the first time Derek did not introduce me. So I'm very proud of you. Very proud of you. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> the Thank you. Was <laughs> when he said, said Jeff is there, you said. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. It's good to be back. It's good to be back and joined by some of my favorite people in the gaming space. My name is Destiny and I'm the creator of Dames for Games. I'm also the marketing manager at Freedom Games and one of the hosts at Level One Gaming on the 2XP podcast. I'm super excited to be here, if you can't tell. We have an amazing showcase for you. We're bringing in some new developers, some new content creators, and uh, we might have some announcements that you guys would be really excited to hear about. So before we get into any of that, Derek is going to jump in and tell us a little bit more about BVIG, why it started and what it means. That's right. So BVIG was created in June of 2020 during the protests and demonstrations that united us worldwide. Black Voices in Gaming has gone from a showcase to a nonprofit organization that helps accelerate the growth of professional game developers. Now, you might be wondering, how do we do all of that? Well, our mission is to facilitate a space where game studio entrepreneurs can have access to funding, meet publishers, and connect with mentors to help them succeed. Now, Justin, what about them sponsors? We could not start the show without giving a shout out to our awesome partners and sponsors for this showcase. First, we'd like to thank our sponsors for their support, PlayStation, ID at Xbox, Raw Fury. If we if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't even have got started. Razor, Wilson Sonsini for being pro bono partner for the Black Voice in Gaming cohort. And we have a very special announcement today. You heard it here first. We are honored to be partnering with Netflix on our first accelerator program called the Experience Excellence Accelerator, where we will be helping to fund four black game development mobile studios. The accelerator will include workshops and curriculum from professional mentors and networking opportunities with the goal of helping to boost professional developers progress on their games and to get them ready for further investment and publishing opportunities. If you're interested in being a part of the Experience Excellence BVIG Netflix mobile game accelerator, please <laughs> submit your application and go to the website for more details. It's gonna be dope. Absolutely. Congratulations on that. And thanks so much to Netflix. And guys, when you look that up, make sure you it's like XP as an experience, not EXP. That's just right. just That's in case. Right. Yeah. There's a big That's XP. The whole name. All right. The whole the whole thing. But um let's let's not forget about our broadcast partners, Twitch Gaming. IGN, GameSpot, and Steam. They're, they're the reason why you're watching this today. And we, we just wanna say, we really, really appreciate it because um, there are a lot of showcases out there and you guys chose us, so thanks. And speaking of Steam, don't forget to check out the Mixes event page where you can learn more about Black Voices and gaming titles, buy the available games, and add them to your wish list. Remember, wish list helps so much. It lets Steam know that these games are upcoming, they're really popular, and then you know other people get to see the great games that our developers are creating. Now, let's talk about some donations, some merch, and socials. If you wanna to donate to Black Voices and Gaming's Tiltify, here's your chance. Grab your phones, snap the QR code on the screen. No amount is too small, and we truly appreciate it. Check out our merch. The BVIG shirts, we're always looking to expand. Justin's out here repping right now. Gorgeous model. Thank you, thank you. Also remember <laughs> to follow BVIG on Twitter at BVI Gaming, Black Voices in Gaming on YouTube and on Instagram. And now that we've shouted out our appreciation, it's time to get the show rolling. Our first guest is Sir 
billion. That's billion like in you make a billion dollars. Like remember that there's money in his name. It's gold in that. With Breeze in the Clouds. Oh, that was cute. <laughs> yeah. The uh, become oh. a storm in canine form really had me too. The little barks in the background, like I could hear him barking as he was like doing his moves. But listen, the music threw me back to like cowboy bebop style. Like I okay. was jamming okay. as I was listening. You know what I mean? Like that jazzy uh -huh. kind of like upbeat. Like, no, that was sick. That was very sick. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah. That's that, that's that throw hands jazz. You know, that's what Thank call you. It. Thank you, throw <laughs> hands jazz. No, that was perfect. <laughs> but we're gonna jump right into the interview with the amazing developer behind this game, Sir Billion. What is up? Are you with us? Come on through. I am here. What's up? Hey, like the Welcome shirt. In. Oh, yeah, well, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, now it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for taking some time out. I know it's like very, very busy right now, Summer Games Fest, and and you're developing a game. But uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Kind of like what got you started and the inspiration behind you know puppies kicking butt. <laughs> puppies kicking butt. I love that. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Breeze is. Um, Probably my first project of this scale. It kind of started off as a um, really like a opportunity to learn how to get into game development. Um, kind of fresh out of college, um, I've done a, a lot of like game jams and smaller games before, just to kind of test the waters of what it's like. And then one day, I, I was uh, actually daydreaming on a um, bus ride home, and this random idea came up where it was just like, "Hey, what if like..." this small dog is stuck trying to fix the weather on this broken cloud or something like that, right? Um, and then eventually it kind of expanded into, you know, what it is now, this large uh, 2D hand-drawn game where you're quirky, you know, beating stuff up in the clouds. I love corgis. Okay, is there a reason why you picked a corgi in particular? Or is it just because they're cute and they have big booties, like? <laughs> they have big ears too, but yeah, no, I, I thought it would be cute to find like a a cool but small dog um, to kind of feature as a protagonist and um, we actually had a bit of trouble starting off because we weren't sure if he was going to be on twos or fours and um, I was mm, a little bit of a mediocre, a mediocre artist back then and so he was coming out looking like a fox for a very long time. Um, so eventually once I got a few artists on board we've got the, um, we got Breeze to look more like a corgi. So He's super cute. Like I love I'm him. A fan. I'm a big fan. And we've just jumped into the game. So like Derek, Derek's got the ones and twos on this. I'm super excited because you guys know what it's like when I play a video game. But um, <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about like the design? Like, so you talked about the Corgi and like why you wanted to get a cute little dog, which he definitely looks like a main character. Like you guys did incredible on that. But like yeah, when it comes to like, vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it comes to the style of game, did you always know it was going to be a bit of like a, a fighter, side scroller, kind of like platforming type? Is that what you wanted to go for? So originally when we started it out, it was um, it was actually a 3D platformer at first. Uh, kind of just had like the generic um, 3D platformer stuff where it was just jumping on stuff, collecting coins. And then we added in the brawling just to kind of give um, Breeze some type of combat aspect, but it wasn't really mature back then. Um, mm. Then eventually I started really thinking about uh, what a lot of my references are based off of and it was stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog and Crash Bandicoot, a little bit of Mega Man mm. um, and a lot of like Saturday morning cartoons and so I think it was around 2015 um, I sat down and said hey why don't we just make Breeze like a 2D cartoon kind of game uh, and so from there we started really trying to develop uh, Breeze and a lot of the other characters to so feel more like Saturday morning cartoon characters um, okay. Just, you know, some inspirations from like Sonic and Crash Bandicoot and stuff like that. Just having all the characters look really appealing and exist in this uh, cartoon-like world. 
Yeah, no, it totally works. I'm getting like Chip and Dale. I'm getting DuckTales. I'm getting this is like a show that you yeah. would watch on Disney with a big bowl of cereal. Um, it was called and the one cereal second. has him on the on box. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. like it could, you could see this turning into a series. You should you should think about that, it, definitely, because I think I'll it would work. It. It's so <laughs> so 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 cute. Um, so I'm gonna throw it to Derek because he's in here and he's like throwing some combos and like giving them what for. Derek, how does the game uh, the gameplay feel? You know, my favorite part about playing this right now is that the combat feels snappy and responsive to every bit of input that I'm you know, throwing at the main character right now. And so I think my, my first question was, you know, what was it like with you and your team uh, just balancing out the feel of this game? Uh, definitely was a chore. <laughs> um, so since Breeze kind of mixes in uh, several different genres, we've got like the platforming aspects. Uh, we've got some inputs that are very similar to games like Smash Brothers. Uh, but then we also drew a lot of inspiration from fighting games. Like um, I, I always like to say Marvel vs. Capcom too. Um, and a lot of the mm. faster anime fighters. So finding a way to you know make all of that work, be, being able to um, feel like you could do cool, flashy, fast stuff. Um, it took a while to really kind of like nail that out. Um, even with like getting a lot of the, the enemy characters as well as the boss characters developed, um, there was a lot of back and forth between you know, hey, this guy is strong and this guy is weak. So we did a lot of like right, right. you know internal play testing to get the AI to feel like it's. Um, you know, uh, challenging uh, to a certain degree, but not too challenging to where like uh, we're not calling it puppy souls. Uh, that's <laughs> what we were joking uh, about yeah. uh, within our team. Like we had it at a point where uh, like everyone but me was struggling. So puppy souls, it was called. This I is see, good. I see. I can tell that like he's on a train that's not in the U.S. because like dude is just minding his own business. Like he's sleeping with all of us. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it was yeah, in the so U.S., people would have already had out their cameras. World star. Yeah, so, definitely, you know. not, definitely not. Definitely not modern. The character's so iconic, Mother. though. Like I really feel like I don't know how to explain this, but he seems like a franchise starter. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you have Mario, yeah. who's a franchise, like Sonic, who's a... And so like, was there a lot of thought put into that? Or was it just kind of like, I just want a really cute character who's gonna kick butt? Or were you thinking about future plans with that? It was kind of a, like a future thought of like, yeah, let's make Breeze look, you know, very iconic the way that, you know, when Mario and Sonic came out, he, you know, their designs really sh uh, shine. So um, yeah, pretty deliberate on that front. We just wanted to make him seem like a really strong character that could stand out. I mean, he does. He really does. Now, if people wanted to wish list the game, tell me, please tell me that you have a Steam page up. We do. We actually launched a Steam page, uh, I think, about two weeks ago. Sweet. Excellent. And guys, make sure you wish list this game because it's incredible. And wish list help the developers so much. It like helps with their algorithm. It shows Steam that this game is up and coming and popular. And honestly, I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. Like, just I want to play it, but Derek gets to play it this time. <laughs> it feels it feels as good as it looks. That's what I'm, that's what I'm telling y'all. Yeah, oh I'd be jealous God. too if I if, if I didn't have the controller in hand. See, see, I am jealous. I am jealous. Not that any of the other games I haven't played were great, but like I can tell, like I'm a button smasher, and I could tell I could probably do some damage just smashing some buttons oh. going through this game. You know what Facts. I mean? Facts. Because I'm so terrible at remembering combos. And on that, do you have to remember any kind of like complicated combos to like really get far in the game, or can a button smasher like me like still enjoy it? Yeah, so we have one button that's literally just attack, and then we've got another button that is yes. uh, like a special okay. attack. So right. I, it's it's interesting. I, I got into a lot of fighting games while developing Breeze, because uh, I always enjoy like watching tournaments and stuff, and I was always really bad at you know inputting quarter circles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely had to learn to kind of understand it, but I wanted to simplify that for Breeze and that like there are, you know, a couple of like advanced things that you could do, but it doesn't require like a, um, you know, a crazy amount of uh, combo input sequences that you have to remember, so. I appreciate that so much. Like, yeah, I really do. Cool. Is there a demo up for the game right now? Uh, there's not a demo up for the game right now. Uh, I have been going to a few cons as of late uh, with this bill in particular to give, you know, folks an opportunity to kind of get a good gauge of like how the gameplay feels. 
Nice, nice. Do you kind of have a date when you might have a demo? Because I definitely want people to try this game out. Like, it just looks too good to be true. I mean, if you can't tell us yeah. that information, it's okay. You know, you can tell me after the show. Yeah, no, but no if plans you could... right now, unfortunately. Okay. Guys, at some point there will be like a demo, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, just let, this is let, so uh, good. Eric let you play. We, we have to throw <laughs> we have to throw attention to the to the comic book panels. You know, it looks so great. The art style is just consistent through from gameplay to cutscenes. I'm 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 already hooked. I'm gonna try and beat this whole game. I, I you better have enough levels here today because I'm just gonna keep going until, <laughs> <laughs> until there's nothing. I wanna nothing play more. after Derek plays. <laughs> Now, before we jump to the end to get your socials so everybody can follow you, I know that you've worked with Humble Bundle and you've had some work with the Black Game Developer Fund. Can you tell us a little bit how that got started, how you got in contact with people? We're, I want to know. I want to know all the details. Okay. Yeah. So funny enough, um, Justin hit me up on Twitter um, many summers ago to kind of, you know, inform me about the uh, Black Game Developer Fund. Uh, then from there, we moved on to um, actually building out a prototype um, we used those funds that we showed up to Humble, um, and they loved it so much they ended up signing with us. Nice. So Humble's your publisher now. Yep. That's what's up. Justin out here that's connecting people, <laughs> and, and and that's I mean like that's what you do. Like that's that's mm -hmm. what Black Voices and Gaming is all about is setting people up to succeed. And so you're another success story. So it's great having you on and, and talking about how all of that came together. Now, if people want to find out more about you, keep up to date with the game and what you're doing, can you drop your socials for us? For sure. Yeah, we've got our main website, breezethegame.com. Uh, we also uh, have a Twitter account. That one's at breezegame. Uh, that's where I do a lot of our, my announcements, and I probably meme too much on Twitter, but if you enjoy that kind of stuff, you'll get it from you there. You can't meme too much. There's no that's what it's for. I, I, might, I, <laughs> might, I might go overboard on April Fool sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, we have the games coming out. It's April 1st. Everybody get excited. Don't Did you do that? For real? That was uh, no, terrible. I, I, I made like um, three or four uh, different versions of the game, if you will. Uh, one of them might have been a little bit too believable. Um. <laughs> like the Sonic got murdered game. That was crazy. Oh, I got it. That was, that was Which crazy. Which is a functioning I I game. Crazy. Like It is yeah, completely functioning. Yeah. yeah. But you thanks again for coming on. Um, we really, I didn't mean to cut y'all off. I was just like, shh, shh. But thank you again for coming <laughs> on. We really appreciate it. <laughs> and that's it, guys. Like. I hope you check out the game. Make sure you go to Steam. Make sure you wishlist it. It really, really helps with the algorithm. It lets Steam know that this game is popping, it's up and coming. And that way it shows up on more people's wish lists and all kinds of things like that. So go do that. And again, huge thank you to Sir Billion for taking some time out to come onto the show. Your game is great, it's iconic, and I cannot wait to steal Derek's troller so I can play it myself. <laughs> you gotta pry it from these hands.
All right, you just saw Heart Machine's Hyperlight Breaker. I am every bit of excited that this game is coming out, but this doesn't match my excitement to talk to our guest <laughs> that we have today. That's Danielle Wallace from Hyperlight, or from Heart Machine. So, Danielle, how you doing? I'm good, doing great. How are you guys? Good, good. Very I am good. super hyped. I was trying to, I was trying to hold my composure after. It was like everything is just so hype with the build up and then the the after credits. I don't know if you call it the after credits scene. It's it, it's looking super sick. Thank you. I was like jamming out again when it played. I was like, yeah. It's so, it's so <laughs> I forgot how right. hype I am for the game for sure. <laughs> How can you not? It's it's hard not to just vibe with the whole trailer. I mean, the music, everything is is coming through. It's it's so gorgeous. It's been such a fantastic project to work on, um, especially the style. Like, I feel like I was such a good uh, fit to be a part of it, and I feel honored to work on it. Uh, yeah, and and that's what brings us to to our conversation today, Danielle. I understand that you are a three D environment artist at Heart Machine Games. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what it's like working at this studio and working on such a cool project? Um, yeah, so I'm a 3D environment artist there. I do, uh, just for like a mini intro, I do a little bit of everything. Um, so not just organic, but also hard surface and a bunch of other stuff like across the whole thing. So I can just like point through when Shred is playing, I did that and I did that uh, kind of deal. Um, but uh, it's been absolutely fantastic uh, being at Heart Machine. The team is, um, literally everyone gets along so well, uh, and every day I go into work, uh, cause we're hybrid right now. So we go in three days a week. It's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, uh, and everyone's like so nice, welcoming. Um, like even when I first got there, I would like, Hey, you want to do this on the weekend? Hey, we're going here. Hey, we're doing this. And it was, it was so refreshing because you hear about so many horror stories in the industry. And I feel like I genuinely got lucky for this being like my first big, uh intro into the industry getting uh, being at this company if i'm being honest <laughs> yeah. yeah where's the yeah, location uh, where where's the uh heart machine located where are you located uh it is in culver city and that's where i live as well so i have maybe like a 10 minute commute if that uh something is which is fantastic as well that's that's super dope I, just real quick how did you get started at the studio like kind of where where did you get started and how did yeah. you get to uh heart machine games i've, I've been familiar and i know alex and <laughs> we've had uh we had hyper light drifter at a uh, at a few events so it's awesome to see yeah. that you're a part of the team yeah um so i was at um from paul i actually kind of like got lucky again. I right out of college, I was working at this small studio called Sky Farm, which did a little bit of children's animation as well as games. So that was like contract work. And then after that, I was at Numinous Games, which made uh, that Dragon Cancer, the VR game. Um, and what? you work. Yeah, on that? oh, that's, that's I didn't dope. work on that one, but I worked on with their upcoming project.
is the uh, Titan Swords. No matter like where you are in the game, you can always see one because they are like bigger than skyscrapers, if I'm being honest. Because they wow. are, no matter where you are, you could see like the huge, uh, like the lore of Titan Swords being like left there and from the, the Titans there. So that was also an honor to work on because that's also one of the bigger pieces in uh, Drifter as well. Yeah, that's, that's cool. incredible. It, yeah, it feels like, I mean, this is definitely the case, you know, because as I develop games, I know, Derek, you develop games. The environment is a character for sure. The biggest character. So you having a hand in that is pretty, pretty awesome. It's, it's also cool to see like the different camera angle changes and that type of thing. Can you kind of break down a synopsis of how the environment uh, activates the player, the player activates the the environment and how it plays a role in the gameplay um yeah so i'll say oh that's a hard one how do i press that one um the style plays such a huge role in the overall feel of the game um when we were every time we make an asset it's like hey does this feel like it's in universe hey does this feel like drifter uh, even my lead gets like so excited like being able to like make uh like tech blocks or oh, the mods to like the drop down labs and drifter right like you'd fall and go underneath the long thing uh and then like hey what does that look like in 3d or like hey what mm. would this asset look like in 3d and be able to stay on style and actually legitimately get up give pieces of ourselves for how we think that would look as well because sometimes we don't get like full full concepts usually it, most of the time it is but if um actually on that point playing into the environment thing um it's been fantastic being able to have so much creative direction at art machine as well like it's not always just like hey here's a thing if i'm like oh hey i think this would look a little better this way or hey uh per in universe i think this color change or uh even like some um when i was making a boss arena i got to do like like little changes, big changes here and there in regard to how that was approached. So it feels um, wild to be given creative direction, especially since I've only been in the industry like three years now. So I'm like, you guys are trusting me with that? But, <laughs> but, <laughs> so but it's, it feels really good. <laughs> so yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. That's incredible. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, is there any other media or games uh, that have played an influence to, you know, some of the content that you're driving in uh, inside Heart Machine? Oh, hmm. I was like, I thought I had an answer before you said like the second half of that. And then I was like, then there's like another answer um, for games in general that have influenced me and I think influenced my art style. Um, I love the Spyro series growing up. Um, as well as like Cooper, Harvest Moon, etc., and how how well the environments told a story and told what the universe was. Right, you can throw art together, but if you aren't telling it through a certain style or angle, then you don't get the full breadth of like, hey, what is this world? What are you supposed to feel? What are the emotions you're supposed to feel through the game? Um, I think in regard to specifically uh, Heart Machine, we've taken like a couple of influences from one of them. One I think that was most influential for me was Rhyme. At least in regard to like the art oh. style, I love how I love how absolutely soft and open that world feels and warm. Like I think for most of the game, there's like not even like music playing. It's like you just feel like you're in a different universe, and like that's what I want the player to feel when they're going through Heart Machine. I think so. or going through Hyperlight Breaker. <laughs> yeah. Going that, through Heart Machine. That, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's that's super cool. What are you playing now? Like just in general, oh. like because yeah, it's always cool to see what folks like developers and artists mm -hmm. are playing, you know, while they're making stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, the default answer is like Tears of the Kingdom, uh, but <laughs> uh, I'm playing through that right now because it's gosh, that game's gorgeous. Um, but another one is uh, Horizon Forbidden West is another one because i i haven't got i've really gotten through that game because of how gorgeous the environments are like i just start and i'm like whoa look at that how that's placed or like look at the details on that and i'm like i don't know what they did um i need to see more talks on that i think one more is disco elysium that's another big one for me as well i love to have the absolutely great storytelling in that game wait well. which one? Oh, disco elysium, disco elysium. Oh, okay, yeah okay. 
that's cool yeah i yeah. like that one a lot i still need yeah. to leap into that one but uh danielle i think this is all the time that we have with you today uh it's been excellent to hear both your vision and your contributions to heart machine and i'm excited to see these giant swords and other assets you've de developed <laughs> for hyperlight breaker um before we're out of here where can people find you if they want to keep up with all the tweets of you identifying the assets that you worked on yeah, so you can find me, um, I think on several, I think I'm the same name as several, uh, on Twitter, dpandaheart, so dpandaheart um, uh, at twitter.com. Uh, same thing for Instagram, as well as, um, I'm not sure how to like link my LinkedIn, but I'm on there too. If you search me <laughs> as an apartment artist, <laughs> I'll pop up for sure on there, because there's not many Danielle's, I think, Danielle Wallace is on <laughs> in the game dev space. So. <laughs> Yeah. That's well, right. thanks for joining yeah. us. I mean, it's so awesome that you're enthusiastic about it. Oh, been in the game for now three <laughs> years. Is that what you said? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. That's awesome because you're, you know, <laughs> it's not always easy to break in and you're breaking in at a great place. Like, you know, and you have yeah. such creative freedom and, and great collaborative experiences. So thanks for joining us. Feels good. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. That is Very Roller good. Girl. It looks super dope. And we're here with Indigo Doyle. What is up, Indigo? Hey, um, not much. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, excited to be here and talk about the game. Yeah, thanks Absolutely. for joining us. Uh, no, fire away. I, it's all you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah. So yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, the game looks really interesting i've never seen anything like it really uh it looks very serene and uh, it, like an interesting narrative experience can you tell us a little bit about roller girl yeah for sure thank you i'm glad that it's coming across as that because that's what i really want people to see um so yeah it's very much um, a relaxing game of taking your time not having a ton of um, time constraints or things that you have to complete um, I kind of always say that it's like a game of side quests because whenever I play a long game, I, I don't even do the main quest half the time, right? Um, so I really enjoy that. And it's also um, heavily based on my childhood growing up in a small city uh, where I would rollerblade like everywhere. Um, so it's, it's really exciting to sort of put myself into a game and see my experiences come to life and watch other people sort of play them and relate to them as well, which is, it's been really awesome. How did you get started in game development and get started with this particular game? Uh, so I got started in game development uh, when I went to school back in 2013. Um, I didn't really have any idea what I wanted to do other than I liked drawing. So I was like, maybe concept art. Um, but then once I started doing concept art, I realized that I didn't like it. And I started learning 3D for the first time and I was like immediately obsessed. Um, and so from there, I started practicing, building up a portfolio. And um, after several years of kind of doing it on the side and working um, in a different field, I finally decided to just take the plunge uh, during the pandemic actually, and go out into doing freelance full time. Um, and then from there, I kind of started thinking about what kind of games I would like to make myself. And I was like, people say, write what you know. So I feel like develop what you know kind of works a little bit too. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to make kind of just a little proof of concept for this game. And then it kind of just grew from there. And people really like the idea of the the whole premise and everything, and especially the, the way that the music affects the game. Um, so it's just been a really exciting journey from there. 
<laughs> it looks it looks super cool. Derek is driving right now. Can you talk right. a little bit about what's going on with the game and the narrative of the story? Yeah, for sure. Um, so within the game, the um, the main character is Naomi. She's based off of me. Um, and so she's mainly rollerblading around this small little town. Um, everyone around is kind of like a quirky local small town person with entertaining personalities and like quirky little stories. Um, and so she has recently been um, gifted this car that has a bit of work that needs to be done to it so she can't drive it. So she's rollerblading around asking people, hey, do you have any jobs I can do so I can make some money um, and fix up this car, which uh, I came up with the idea because that actually kind of happened to me a little bit. Um, I had purchased <laughs> my first car. I was so excited. I saved up so much money and I, it was like a nice like kind of sports car. Not really. Wait, what car of, was it? Um, okay, so it's not a car. sports car because now that you've asked, it's going to be embarrassing because it's not actually a sports <laughs> car. But... <laughs> <laughs> compared to what, laugh, you know what I mean? <laughs> compared to what other people were buying at my age i was like this is like a sporty car it was like a tiburon like a hyundai tiburon okay. from like 2004 um so it was like kind nice, of curvy nice. compare everyone was buying like a pontiac sunfire and i was like i'm gonna be different <laughs> and i'm gonna get this blue tiburon um so yeah, I bought that and it, it had a crack in the windshield. It was missing spark plugs. I couldn't drive it. Uh, and everyone was mocking me. They were like, you have a car, but you can't drive it. Like, ha ha. Um, oh. And I was like, just like sad for like six to eight months trying to save up money to fix it. So uh, I really liked putting that idea into the game of like, you have this, but you can't use it. Um, and I also, I still loved rollerblading around when I had the car. So it's kind of just combining two of those things. Did you I really see. do? I'm just curious. Did you do odd jobs to get the money, or was it? <laughs> <laughs> not not really. Um, not specifically odd jobs. I did have a paper route for six years, so that's where this quest that you're doing right now kind of comes okay. into play. Um, and there was a lot of like, if you had a paper route and you had to take the weekend off, you had to find someone to cover for you. Uh, which is basically what the character just did. He was like, I want to go somewhere, do my papers for me. And you're like, well, I could use the money. Um, so why not? But yeah, I, I actually had like a, a part time job at the movie theater, so I didn't do odd jobs, but um, I probably would have if needed. Tell, can you tell us a little bit about the, the playlist system? Because it's very unique. I mean, just looking at like checking out the trailer, you go into that. Can you talk about that system and where you're going with it? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the playlist system is like literally just based off of when I was like 15 and I had an iPod Nano and I had playlists on it that were based off of sort of how I was feeling. So if I was having a really great day, I'd have this like really great playlist where it felt like everything was just like gorgeous and sunny and bright. Um, and then if I was having a bad day, I'd have sort of the opposite where it's very like moody and like sad. Um, and I feel like as a teenager, everything is kind of like really dramatic. So if you're having a bad day and you're listening to that song, the world around you kind of feels like, oh, like everything is like shrinking in on me and I'm like alone. Um, and if you're having a great day, then it's kind of like sun shining, you're walking on sunshine type of thing. Um, so that's what we're implementing here of having the music not only change the visuals, but also affect the narrative and what things are available to you depending on that state as well. So can you like collect other like songs that like boost up your playlist? I'm, I'm super curious mm -hmm. about this. Yes, so we actually can. Um, there is a, a couple of what? pickups placed around the world that you can uh, you can grab and they'll unlock new music for your playlist. Um, nice. Which is pretty, I'm pretty happy about that because it's kind of based off of when you're kind of like walking around. I always say like after it snows, you find like little stuff on the ground that people dropped into snow banks and couldn't find anymore. Um, so it's kind of based off of that. If you find an item, the song that's linked to it is kind of related to that item and tells a bit of a story about like who dropped it or what that item meant to that person. That's cool. Who like who's doing the, the, the music? Are you sourcing it from different artists that you like? Are you doing the music? Right. So I'm glad you asked that because I was actually about to, to point it out. Um, so right now the music is um, just some free music that we found, but we're in the progress of contacting um, indie bands from Ontario that kind of give off the same vibe of the game so we can license them Very into cool. it. Um, 
and sort of shine like a bit of a light on the local music industry here, which is really exciting. Um, I like to always say that Avril Lavigne was from the town that this is based <laughs> off of, so like she should be in it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, yes. uh, we're planning on, on getting some uh, some local artists into the game for sure. Speaking of the town, uh, you know, as I'm cruising around here, I'm, I'm delivering newspapers, and there's definitely a sense of life and reality to the neighborhood. Um, you know, I'd love to know more about what it was like, uh, you know, building the environment and building a space that, uh, you know, feels authentic. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, so yeah, it was based off of Belleville, Ontario, which if anyone knows, like, shout out to you because no one knows where it is because it's so small. But um, I grew up there and it was really exciting to kind of like spend time building it. Um, people think that I'm kind of insane because I pretty much hand built all of these houses, but I was like really oh. dedicated to make them look unique. Um, so like yeah. majority of the houses should look different. Like I'll tell you a secret there. They are a lot of the same house, but they do have like aspects that are different, um, different materials, different props outside, but the bases are, are pretty much the same. But there are a couple of houses that are like very specifically built to look exactly the same as the house in real life because I got really obsessed. Um, because uh, yeah, making making props and environments is my like main focus. So I really had mm -hmm. a good time um, making all of these assets, and it's been really interesting to sort of like see the town sort of like become itself, and then watching other people go through it. Um, they don't really have the same sort of like memories of the area as me. So it's it's interesting to see what they interpret it as. Because um, to me, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's that's Albert Street. That's totally chill. And they're like, I don't know where I am. And I'm like, oh, I guess not everyone, <laughs> not everyone grew up there. <laughs> like, uh, this dude is trying to like climb trees with rollerblades. I'm, I'm amazed. <laughs> I, need to, <laughs> I feel I will, like I need to... <laughs> I will do whatever it takes to deliver these papers. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh my gosh. We actually have a, a bit of a glitch where if you jump on certain things near trees, you could kind of glitch the collision and jump into the tree. But um, I will I will leave that to the imagination if you, uh, <laughs> if you want to try yeah. it, you can. <laughs> How many For people sure. are on your team? Um, so right now, I'm just trying to... I keep losing track because in my head, it's like five but i think it's yeah so we're four right now sorry um there's a lot of moving <laughs> people but yeah there's four of us right now that's, that's awesome oh, nice. where are you at in development um so right now we're kind of in concept definition phase um we've done a lot of pre-production and uh proof of concept testing stuff like that and now we're trying to sort of build out the like all of the main mechanics which they are in place but they just we want to polish them a bit more and allow them to feel a, just a bit more intuitive um and then we're also in the phase of looking for more funding hopefully finding a compatible publisher and uh just fully building it out we're hoping to finish development within about a year but it's um it's very dependent on a lot of moving pieces yeah i was about to ask <laughs> go ahead Derek. Uh, no, you know, it just tacking on a, 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 a sort of a, a wrapping question here, but, um, you know, it, building this sort of slice of, slice of life game, was there anything that you wanted to include, but you were like, ah, you know, this one's not going to make it into the project, maybe next one. <laughs> um there's a lot of like little features like i have feature creep every day for, uh -huh. <laughs> where i really want to add in like putting in tricks or putting in a customization system um having unlockable areas kind of like tony hawk um yeah 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 like a lot of there's yeah. a lot of little things so it's it's kind of hard to not put them in um just because of budget and timing um, I always said that like if the budget was endless, we would never finish this game because <laughs> there's so many things I want to add into it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy skitch? with how it's going though. Sorry. Can you sketch? Um, no, <laughs> we decided not to put uh, <laughs> cars in the game just because oh, it's, okay. uh, it's, the vibe is very like relaxed and even mm. in the city that it's from. Uh, there's not that much traffic. Like you could lay in the middle of the road and probably not get hit for like <laughs> at least 20 minutes. Like, or 20 it's perfect minutes. for skating. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the game looks cool. super dope. Um, Thank you. Thanks for sharing it with us. Uh, where can we find? I know the demo is on itch, right? Do you mm -hmm. have a Steam page set up? 
and everything. Uh, so right now we don't have a Steam page, but we will hopefully be announcing a Steam page in the next uh, month or so. Okay, you got to get that mug up so we can promote your Steam page and get you some wish with ASAP. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. for um, sure, for sure. For sure. So where can we find more about you, the development of Roller Girl, and everything that you're working on? Um, so the best place would be on Twitter right now, which is at Roller Girl Game on Twitter. Um, we do also have an Instagram and a Discord, which is all linked on the Twitter bio. Um, and we also have a, a newsletter that we send out every month, so people can join that as well. Um, and yeah, we're, we're pretty much everywhere on socials as Roller Girl Game. And then I guess Sorry. for me personally, it's it's my name, Indigo Doyle, on Twitter. Um, that's my main my main source of, of social media for the moment. Sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody check out Roller Girl, get the demo. Uh, and we got to talk about some funding opportunities potentially. I know I'm put, now I'm putting you on blast again, but yeah, <laughs> we got to connect on that. <laughs> for sure, I'll take um, it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank great, you. Great, thank you. All right, well, we have another special guest with us today. That is Lizette Titre Montgomery. Lizette, how are you doing? I'm doing great, how are you doing? I am doing excellent. I, I'm really excited to hear about all the things that you're up to, some of the uh, some of the stirrings that are happening. Uh, you know, of course, those details we'll dig into very shortly. But if you just give a little bit a little bit of background about yourself and and uh, you know what what you're up to these days. Hi, uh, welcome everyone to the stream. Uh, my name is Lisa Titri Montgomery, and um, I've been making games for gosh, it's been 22 years now. Um, I've done everything from mobile to PC to a lot of time in AAA. So, and my last project was Psychonauts 2, and now I'm currently starting my own studio called Cornerstone Interactive, uh, working on really focused, mature, narrative-driven games. That's so dope. I'm yes, excited. Yes. I love those type of games. And, and kudos to you for being in the industry for, for this long, because I know like you have to, pay your dues or whatever and sometimes it can be very toxic but like you stuck with it and it's it's incredible to see that you you've worked on other people's dreams and now you've have your studio and you're working on what you want to work on and putting out so like congratulations on that I'm when I get older I want to be just like you so I want to grow up to myself <laughs> I'm not that old, but yes. I, right. I, was like, I was like, wait, what are you, what are you saying? You, it's, it's not saying that you're older. It's just saying that like, I want to be at that level that you're at. That's what I mean. Well, thank you. Thank hey, you. Just giving you, you a hard, just giving you a hard time right out the gate, man. So yes, so, um, it's, so it's been quite the ride. It's been quite the ride. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's true. It, it, you know, you've, You've um, you've been doing great things and are continuing to do great things in the industry. Um, you know, I, I think a highlight of wanting to talk to you today, it certainly centers around, uh, you know, what's cooking, uh, you know, with Cornerstone Interactive. Uh, but before we get there, it would be really excellent to hear, you know, about some of that history. Uh, you mentioned uh, Psychonauts and, uh, and, and some other spaces that you've been involved in as well. Could you expand on some of that? Yes, um, like it's been a long journey. In the last 10 years, I've been really focused on advocacy work. Um, I think throughout my career, especially coming up, I noticed that I was often the one of two on the floor, you know, and everyone knew who I was, but I didn't know who everyone else was because of that. And so for me, I sort of really turned into like, what can I do? How can I share my knowledge to change that? And so for the last 10 years, I've been on working on Gameheads, which is a nonprofit here in Oakland where we take students from 18 to 24 um, and we teach them how to make video games from their you know, first video game to how many other prototypes they want to develop with us. We've had some students in the program for the last total of nine years um, and they stayed through us through college. Now they're developing prototypes. Some of them are getting published um, and some of our students are, are actually getting hired at some of the biggest studios in the world. So I'm really proud of the work we're doing. Aww. And I see Cornerstone as the next extension of that. Uh, that's incredible. 
That is really, really cool. So my question is like, I, I love that you're doing advocacy and, and that you're helping like younger people come up into like this industry because we are trying to build a foundation. That is what Black Voices in Gaming is about. What is some advice that you would give to, I, I'm gonna take it from like a feminine point of view because I, I'm also in the game industry. And like you said, there's only like, there's so, only so many of us, right? What would you give what kind of advice would you give to a young black girl who is excited about gaming, loves gaming, but like just doesn't feel like she fits? Like what kind of motivational thing would you say to her? I would say don't focus on what you see, focus on what you can create. Um, I think I there is a huge opportunity to create content for when I say a mature audience, I mean emotionally mature audience, not just an mm. you know X-rated and vilely you know violent mature audience. Right. And I think there's a major distinction there. And I think that comes with creating content specifically for new demographics. Um, we've been hyper focused on what I would consider a niche. If you look at the total global population of who gamers are, um, and there hasn't been a lot of effort in, in really appealing to one older gamers, more gamers of color. Uh, more uh, players who are not necessarily in, interested in like adversarial sort of games, but collaborative games. And so I would say focus on what you want to play and the games you want to make instead of regurgitating the same stuff we've made because that's not going to get anyone anywhere. I mean, there are people who own that space. Um, right. You're better off like reinventing and finding and creating through your own voice. I love that. That's sound advice. So if you're listening out there, that this goes for anyone actually who's listening yeah. today and who wants to get into the gaming field, like create, I think it's best when you tell stories that you know, and then you're able to form them and mold them into something that like, it's, it's just something beautiful about storytelling. So do what you know. And if you do what you know, I guarantee you'll find somebody who will pick up on it and love it. And I feel like that's basically what you're saying. So thank you for that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That, that resonates in a really big way. Um, I, you, you know, it, a part of the, the work that you've been doing in game heads and the, the value that's been, uh, creating there, you're identifying, you know, the folks who have been, uh, going on and, uh, creating prototypes and so on. Uh, you know, how are, are any of these people, uh, you know, starting to find their way as potential con contributors to cornerstone or, uh, do you find yourself, uh, you know, seeking to continue to collaborate with any of those individuals that you've mentored or supported? Well, I think for me, Cornerstone is sort of what we consider like the, the next phase. And so it is a separate entity for me from GameHeads that is purely focused on people who are 18 to 24. Um, but Cornerstone is a business. So we are going to be a premier gaming studio. So we'll be hiring people from game heads, hopefully. Um, but in the short term, what we're gonna be looking for is more senior talent mm -hmm. to help build the structure of the studio before we start bringing in people who are new. Um, so but the whole goal is that the whole arc of the company as we develop, you know, more and more hits so we can do of like hackathon or sort of game jam culture within the studio as well so that anyone can, can bring a pitch forward. So that's the long-term goal is we are creating a safe, fun, like creative play space um, for people who haven't been catered to before. And I want to see what kind of stories and opportunities come from creating that space. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, that. yeah, that's wonderful. I, I have a, a one other follow up question relating to, you know, kind of making these transitions and, and developing a new space. Um, as somebody who too is in a state of uh, developing a new studio or sorry, expanding uh, some developments at a studio uh, for those developers out there those people who are interested in some of the more entrepreneurial side of games uh any advice that you might give to somebody who is breaking out a little differently uh you know maybe not seeking to work for their favorite company or work for a new company but saying i want to make something of my own i would say the best thing you could do is get to a mvp as quickly as possible um, it's a lot of people just sit in the ideation phase and they think about all the aspects of the game and their every little nuance, but there's like nothing on the controller to play. So you're really kind of, you could be really stuck in this thought space, 
but the proof is in the pudding and that pudding is what happens on the screen. So the quickly, quicker you can get to a minimal viable product and have something to play, the quicker you can build pipelines to iterate so that you can get to good faster, the better off you'll be. And like, don't get stuck so much in the conceptual phase that you're just kind of lost in the world you've built for yourself and you can't get out. Yeah. Yeah, that's excellent, that's advice. excellent advice. Yeah, especially because I feel like a lot of people, when they start making games, your your game's going to change. Like the, the idea, the story, like you might have a core idea, but there are so many changes that are going to happen. Like get that light outline and then just start working, just start doing it. That's what I've been hearing from a lot of developers and a lot of people at studios, like just do it, just make it happen. Um, and I know that that's, not, that's easier said than done, but we have Lizette's here. She did it. Derek's here. He's he, he did it. You know what I mean? Everybody who's been here has at some point had to start with an idea, you know, and it's blossomed into something incredible. Um, I had a question. So I know you were talking about the age range from 18 to 24. Is there any specific reason why you picked that age range and it doesn't move on, you know, any older or any younger like what is it about that age range that you were like these are the ones that these are the 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 kids and and the adults that i want to focus on um uh, a bit of a correction it's well, it's 14 to 24 but a lot of our students are 18 oh okay okay, um, okay well i think to one of two things um especially the high school student range we sort of target that range because it's kind of the last hurdle to get students into stem before they get into college so ideally, we would like to get them exposed to these concepts as quickly as possible, get in making their first game as quickly as possible, because the longer they're exposed to these concepts, the more knowledge they will gain over time. And so that gives them a leg up on someone who's just starting right in college. Um, right. Plus, um, it gives them something to show um, when they're applying to schools. So they can say, oh, I've made a prototype. I'm serious about this. Um, rather than saying, I think this would be a great idea, but not really having a strong understanding. Um, so for us, it's trying to capture them while they are a captive audience. Um, I think most teenagers play games now, mm. um, especially since the pandemic, um, since it was really their only social outlet um, that was accessible to them. So what you're really seeing now is a new generation, Generation Alpha, is completely online like 100% almost play games yeah. unless their you know, parents don't let them. And they're still being indoctrinated into these toxic cultures, right? Yeah. So what we want is for our students to really think about themselves as game creators, not just consumers, and what kind of games that they want to create for themselves, not the reflection of what has been given to them. I love that. And OK, I we're running close on like the end of time, but I know it's in Oakland, but do you guys have any plans of expanding to other areas or is this just like, I really wanted to focus on where I live and help my community? Um, the program is actually online. It's free. It's all okay. year round and anyone from any time zone that can make it work is allowed to join. We have, you know, we have students in Hawaii. We have students that are, are out of the country. We have students that are in the East Coast. So we expanded the program to make sure that we can get as many you know, students that as we can access if they really want it. Um, and it, with Cornerstone, we're doing the same thing. We're going to be a remote studio because I want to hire artists from anywhere in the world. Um, That's the way and, to do it. <laughs> um, I want to, you know, you can't really say you're a diverse company if you're only willing to hire within the United States. So for me, I think it's important that that international access um, and the digital divide sort of removes that barrier. I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us. You, you've been, I've learned so much and I feel like there's so much more I could learn, but we have such a short amount of time. But if you are interested and you want to find out more, definitely look into this. Lizette, if they want to learn how to become a part of the program, if they want to see what you're doing and how the studio is going and maybe, you know, apply, where can they get all that information at? 
Sure. If you're a student or someone who is actually in, in college but looking for people to make games with um, and learning, looking to learn from the best in the industry, you can go to gameheadsoakland.org. Um, when our application process opens, usually in the fall, uh, make sure you apply because those slots get filled quick. Um, and for Cornerstone Interactive, I would say look out in the next few months. Um, we're starting to recruit artists as we're developing pitches and I'm hoping to start getting out there to, to get some cash flow toward the end of the year. So um, follow me on Twitter at Z16 um, or on LinkedIn. Um, just use my name and uh, keep a lookout. There's some exciting news coming. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Derek, that was incredible. Like, I feel so inspired now. And I can't hear you if you're talking. Derek, are you talking? I I am talking. I made the mistake of muting myself for any background <laughs> sounds. I have a little one. You never know what to expect. I understand. Um, yes. No, I, I am excited as well. And I was saying, you, you heard it here first. And so, uh, yes, please stay tapped in with what Lizette is up to. Uh, and it's been a pleasure to be able to hear from your expertise and um, and really gain uh, so much insight in such a concise moment. Absolutely. Guys, we still have so much more to go. Like this is the, you already heard her. We, we have the best of the best on the show. Like this is dope. So again, thank you, Lizette. Guys, keep up with her. If you're yeah. interested, if you're interested in becoming a gamer, if you want to see what else she's putting out, go follow her. Don't delay. Literally just pick up your phone and do it. It's so simple. And uh, we'll catch you in the next interview. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm super excited because we have something a little different this time. Like, I know we always talk about games and developers, which is definitely dope. But we are going to bring on two creators of a blurred box. I know you guys have heard of subscription boxes before, but this one is incredible. And I, I would go into detail about it, but I'm going to let them explain how they came together, what inspired them to do it. And, you know, we may have a partnership or something going on that we'll talk about a little later. And uh, just just make sure you stay tuned because it's all good stuff, it's all good stuff. So Hanif and Kay, are you there? Are you with us? Yes, yes, yes thank you for having us. No, thank you for coming on. Like, I, I was super excited. When we first talked about it, I was like, we gotta get you on Black Voices and Gaming because I, I've never heard of a blurred box for black nerds. Like I
people are going to be really be excited. And one thing we want to let people know that each box is like a mini Comic Con experience. You know, you get in the lanyard, you get in the badges, you get in the stickers, you get in all of the other kind of swag you normally would pick up when you go to a comic uh, comic book convention. That's so sad. Okay. Okay, we haven't heard from you, and I want to hear from you. So, <laughs> yes, okay, <listen>. talk. <laughs> you got to talk, Kay. You got to talk. So, do I know? Like, must, that's the you, whole point of a silent partner. <laughs> no, no, you can't. You signed up to come on to an interview. You can't be silent. What is that? <laughs> Okay, so technically, let me just say, just like with the idea of the of the box, I did not initially meant for us to create the box. I was just saying, I wish there was a service like that. Someone took my idea and was like, why don't we do it? I was like, no, no, no. Like, I was hesitant. I was like, I didn't mean us. Like, I, I'm not that kind of person. I don't know how to do any of these things. So I get, I get roped into stuff. I have an idea and someone, him decides you know what that's a really good idea it's kind of not cool okay the lesson from this is like not telling anybody else your cool ideas if you don't want to get roped in but it's too late baby you're here <laughs> you know what i mean it is and i'm so, glad i'm i am glad that he ran with this idea because i've been loving seeing everybody's reaction like i'm a lurker like I like so I will search videos of people responding and like how they how they enjoy the box. So like that's why I'm like I don't like being in front of the camera because I'm like then I can't like lurk and like I go to cons and I see people and I'm like oh this is cool and they just don't know who I am. And I'm like that's great. They know who he is. They don't need to know me. They know him. They know the face. It's a brilliant oh, thing for me. I hate to break it to you, but everybody's gonna know who you are now because you're on Black mm -hmm. Voices in gaming. But listen, I'm really like, let me just tell you how important it is that you are on here because there are so many spaces that are just full of men that it's really nice to see a woman in this space, regardless if like you don't wanna be on it. Like after this, I promise we won't bring you back if you don't wanna come back. And if you wanna come back, we'll bring you back. But it's, okay. it's so important to see people who look like you. Like that that's part of the reason why we do this show. That's part of the reason why I put together Dames for Games is because representation matters. And there's some little girl out there who loves to cosplay, who loves going to conventions and she's gonna watch this and she's gonna be like, oh my God, maybe I can do that someday. So whether you know it or not, you are making changes, okay? There's somebody out there just like you who's like, man, I just wanna lurk. But they're gonna see that like you were able to get up in front of this camera and talk about this and like that's really inspiring Kay. i just want you to know that you may not think it is but that's super inspiring oh thank you yeah it's 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 the lurker in me i'm just i, I can't it's hard to pull away from being a lurker i'm sorry it's really i hard. understand <laughs> i'm a bit of an introvert too it doesn't seem like it because i'm in front of the camera and i have to like play it up for the camera you know but um <laughs> Yeah, I, I like to lurk too. I lurk on Twitter a lot, so no worries. But um, Kay, tell us, tell us, how how did you and Hanif meet? Because I feel I feel it feels like a brother sisterly vibe. Like you definitely give him his shots, and he's like, dang, like he, he, she came in swinging, y'all. So tell us a little bit about that. So I'm friends with his wife. Okay. We have <laughs> met. Me and his wife met in like 2004 and then she married him and I was like, really? Do you have to? I'm losing a friend. I feel I like that. Him. I do like him now. No, I, like I him feel now, that. Th that's fair because I don't like my friend's husband. So see, you're doing better than I am. It is like losing a limb, y'all. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> but Hanif, you seem really cool. I would like you to. Thank you, thank you. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm the plus one. That's what, pretty much what it is. I, I married into this. As long as you, you know do. where you stand, you know what I'm saying. Like oh, you know I know, your role, I know. Then it's all good. Yeah. And, and my okay. wife, as Kay says, she has ideas. My wife is the creative director. A lot of times, she just comes in. This oh, why don't you guys do this? And then she sidles off with these. I like what was this? These are great ideas. This, we should go, we should run with that. So yeah, yeah. I, teamwork makes the dream work. Derek, yeah. did you have any questions that you wanted to ask? Because I know when I first approached you about it, you were like, yeah, we have to have them on the show. Oh, Derek, you're muted. Yeah, uh, I, I, I mute for as a contingency. I have a baby in the background who might, you know, scream. It's 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 a background thing. Also dogs and stuff like that. So, you know, OK, anyways, the point being uh, does this does this uh, oh, accurate in saying that when uh, when she approached about uh, the the blurred box of talk noir, I was 
absolutely excited uh, without hesitation. I was like, yes, please sign me up. Those are those dogs I mentioned earlier. But <laughs> my my question is, my question uh, goes back to this strategy. You, you mentioned it uh, kind of being born out of the pandemic. And I think um, that ended up being really excellent time. You, you, you identified a need and then went to go confirm if that need had already existed somewhere and then decided to fill that space up. So, um, you know, out came from that a new strategy. And I'm curious, uh, what are your plans currently and, and how are you can, keeping the momentum flowing? What are your current strategies for Otaku Noir? Uh, I think what we can do now that everyone can go back out and you know, mask or maskless or whatever and, and do conventions, it doesn't stop us from doing what we're doing because not everyone can make it to San Diego Comic Con, Anime NYC, uh, MomoCon yeah. or HBCU, BlurCon. I mean, there's hundreds of conventions, unfortunately, not hundreds of black owned conventions, but there's still hundreds, if not thousands of black creators, writers, artists, musicians, game developers. We want this to be, uh, to be an opportunity for them to expand their reach, expand their audience. We want to be uh, a herald for them. You know, find out about BVIG. You know, find out for, about D4G. Oh, I never heard of it. What's that? It's in the box. You no, know, open up the box. You have the information. Uh, you can go to the website to learn more to support them directly. You don't have to continue to go through a Taco Noir to find out about this new writer that I heard about. I just I never knew about this manga before I got this box, and now you're a fan of them. That's what we, that's what we like. Case says we love seeing the unboxing. We love getting the DMs from people who enjoy the stuff, or you know, telling us, "Oh, I had to open up the box before my kids came home because last box they took the T-shirt and I didn't get anything." I mean, we get, so it's, it's nice yeah. to know that our ideas are bringing some happiness to people like that. But uh, going forward, I think we each box is kind of like reinventing ourselves. What new theme have we not done? Because. Um, when you create your own company, as you know, you can do what you want, but there's so many things out there, so much wonderful content out there that we can only put so much in one box per quarter. So it's like we can come up with ideas. Like I said, we collaborated with Blurred uh, to produce to produce this box. Uh, we did a, fan, a black fantasy box last year called Blurred of the Rings, where we created our own world, had our own coins, maps, uh, <laughs> deck of cards that had like black uh, mermaids, black royalty and stuff like that. Um, you know, we did one exclusive about villains. I mean, there's so much stuff that we can do. Um, I mean, we have another box coming out in September that I know you guys are going to, uh, that uh, we'll tell your, your audience about in a little bit. But there's so much that we can do that I think um, looking at our company is similar to, you know, going down the bread aisle at the supermarket where you don't just have one type of bread. You know, you can have hundreds, if not thousands of different types of bread, whole wheat, white bread, whatever. That's what our box is like. We have something for everybody. And that's what's Excellent. up. Yeah. I know one of the things that I saw that you were promoting, um, Vampire in Brooklyn, and it was a cereal box. And that was, oh my God. I, I, I have never I, seen I that I, before. I, I, <laughs> do, you, do you have the Vampire in Brooklyn cereal box? Because listen, yes. that should have been a real cereal right there. Whoa. Okay? Uh, we're not no, culinary no, experts. We don't want to get food poison in here. <laughs> Like that that's where we draw the line. We can give you ideas. No. We can put confetti in cook. it, but if you no, you don't want anything that we will cook. You're like nobody's no, getting no. any cocoa puffs. Like that's we're not incredible. Yeah, it's that. just yeah. <laughs> we, we need to come up with our own custom mazes and the word and like the uh Let's go. Uh, the word jumble and stuff. Uh even got the fake ingredients. <laughs> Missionary facts, you know, hundred percent blurred, hundred percent blurred, no knowledge, hundred percent melanin, hundred percent gatekeeping zero. So you know, things like that. yo, that gatekeeping one, that's on point. It. That's on point because it. yeah. it's about community. Uh, it's about teamwork, right? And like, mm -hmm. I love some of the things that you were saying earlier. Like, it's not just about like what we can put in the box. It's about like putting things in the box that gets other people known for what they're doing. And you don't have to keep subscribing to us, but like if you find something you like and you keep subscribing to like getting those comics or like getting that art, like that's helping somebody else in the community. And I, and I love that. So we are running short on time, but before we do, I just wanna quickly talk about the box that we are partnering with you. So Dames for Games and Black Voices in Gaming are partnering with the Taco Noir to bring you guys the most incredible blurred box experience ever. And I think we have a box 
that we can show them what it looks like. Like it, it looks so so dope, guys. Like it's incredible. This da, is da, da, the, the box. I don't know if, it, if how how good it's gonna look in in the in the shot. I'll, I'll spin it's gonna it look even better in person, y'all. I'm hyping it up. Okay. I'm Follow us on Instagram. We'll definitely let everyone know uh, more about the box as you know, as the time goes on, we'll be revealing stuff. Not exactly what's in the box, but more hints so that way you can know to whet your appetite to let you know what to expect uh, when you get this box. They said they're going to tease y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kenneth K, thank you so much for coming on and spending some time with us and telling us about the blurred box. Make sure you go check them out. Make sure you follow them on their social media. Because listen, they're doing the game box, but like they're going to keep making boxes. And I definitely know that there'll be something that you'll see that you'll love. Like, like I wanted the cereal box. I'm a little sad that there's no cereal in it, but um, I don't want the box. And it's you can still use it as a cereal box holder for yourself. Yeah, you that, is extra true. Inside that is absolutely and, uh, true. I, I might do that. I might go get like some cereal. cocoa pebbles and stick it in there. <laughs> yeah, you just put, Anyways, put the cereal in it. Could you imagine? <laughs> Could you imagine having like some chocolate frosted flakes and pulling that out for somebody who did not know it was in a real Thanks. cereal? I would, I, that would be great. That would be great. That's a flex. But anyway, <laughs> we have come to the end of our time and um, it, it's been great. This interview has been so eye opening. Please continue to do what you guys are doing. Like it really is like a, I don't know. You, I say everybody's inspirational, but like, Kay, you're inspirational girl. I know, I know you, I know you want to lurk, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say your name every time I go somewhere and be like, "Yeah, have y'all heard of Kay? She got that." <laughs> but you yeah, okay. Hey, please don't do that. No, 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 no. We, we, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. She, she, just, she just slides <laughs> off, off <laughs> screen like no. all him. I promise. She says that when she showed up on the interview. But anyways, guys, that's it for us with this interview. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. We'll see you soon.
that was the latest trailer from corrupt we're with the creator himself jesse wright we've been talking to jesse for a long time when we used to host uh mix events at evo like you've been to gdc uh the like the afro tech showcase like you've been going everywhere you had That's black salt up. corruption um and now you're really getting ready towards the launch of corrupt how's it going man it's been it's been a crazy journey so far but you know it's it's been an exciting kind of road developing corrupt and yeah starting with like black salt corruption and transitioning into corrupt and then kind of getting it where it is now it's it's been an exciting process for sure and hey shout out to you guys for sure like seeing everything from being at mix events and stuff a couple years back and seeing how everything has progressed now it's like shout out to you for that it's been really awesome seeing this platform grow yeah for absolutely. sure absolutely uh it, you know i think it's been I, i've had a chance to check out black salt corruption I, that's actually where it, my my knowledge about this game really came into place and so when i heard uh about corrupt i was like wait a minute i know something's changed and so um <laughs> i would love to hear about you know how you came up with the name a little bit of the background in it and just you know your relationship to fighting games yeah so uh, kind of going with the so black salt corruption uh, <clears throat> that was kind of a whole different project altogether where I got to collaborate with one of my uh, mentors who owns the Black Salt franchise. And we just had a random idea one day of, you know, what if, you know, I made a, a fighting game that kind of brought some of your characters or my characters in and, you know, just like an arcade experience, something like the Dreamcast days. And uh, that's kind of where Black Salt Corruption was created and then kind of going from there i think we did yeah just steam early access and then we had started working on trying to get it on the switch but then COVID had happened and it was so crazy like getting through lot check and stuff like that so uh, in the background i had always been working on corrupt that was like again black salt corruption was bringing together his property and mine and so um corrupt was that that that's been my baby since i was in like high school i've been writing about gatling uh, so being able to finally have the opportunity now uh, to to bring this story uh, and, and make a game around it and everything has been like super awesome. <laughs> and then yeah, going yeah. to what I've been with the fighting game uh, community and genre, like I've been competing online in tournaments for so long and uh, been fortunate to hit some leaderboards and stuff to where I've made a lot of friends that are in the fighting game community and I go to a lot of those events as well. So naturally kind of wanting to make a fighting game and, and playing and consuming a lot of the fighting games that are out on the market it's just kind of always been what i love and, and wanted to do so yeah so the game has uh progressed over the last few years you you worked with a few other publishers to help you get to you to where you're at now um can you tell us about the progress that you've made up to this point and kind of where you're you're uh, working on the the release for the game. Yeah, so so yeah, I've worked with a couple of different publishers now, uh, getting to this point, and really what it's been is you know a fighting game is such a niche genre where publishers you know they, they get excited about it, but then it's like well we actually sit down and, and try to come up with a plan on how we're going to market it and roll things out. That's when it kind of like okay you know we don't know if we're the right fit for this project. And, so it's never been any like bad blood or any horrible situations or anything like that. It's just been more like, OK, this isn't the right fit for us, but hey, we'll help you, you know, along the road or whatever. And uh, yeah, like the progress I've made so far is also just being able to build my team up a lot stronger where before it started with blueprints that I made and I am <laughs> no programmer by any means or anything. Uh, so putting together blueprints in, in just having something functional at one point was super exciting. Uh, and then some of the people that I actually met in the Unreal forums uh, that I started working with and kind of slowly building a team. Uh, but then more recently, uh, there is a development group that They've been making some different fan fighting games uh, that have done like a pretty big splash where the fighting game community went crazy over. Um, but we, we kind of teamed up and had talked about working together a lot in the past and then finally kind of took that step once I uh, started working with a new publisher. And now things have just been progressing well and we can, we can finally see that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, 
definitely will be content complete. You know, now we we can see those those dates and those milestones and things. So, uh, as far as the release window, uh, no hard release date just yet, but we definitely are moving towards it now. Finally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you, you talked about building your team and I, I'm curious, what about building your community? You know, fighting games have a specific resonance with the black community. Uh, I, I, we all play fighting games here. We're looking forward to fighting games on the, on the way. I'm looking forward to Corrupt. How do you get your community charged for a title like this? Yeah, so, you know, it's been a while since I've shown any gameplay or anything on Corrupt because it was kind of at that point where I noticed I had dropped some gameplay and would get like a really big response. But then it's like, I'm showing them exactly like what we just got to that day. So I'm like super excited about it. Like, oh man, let me get this out here. Then it goes crazy. And then it's like, I don't really have much to show, you know, like a couple weeks later. So it was like, let me build this up. Let me actually, uh, you know, work with some fighting game community members let them test the demos out, you know, different builds and stuff that we've had. And so that's really been how I've done it is just kind of having builds that I, I'll let fighting game players like kind of get their hands on and do some testing, and, you know, get different feedback from them. And yeah, just kind of working with them, but, but kind of been quietly doing that so far. But now to try to let people know that we actually are kind of back on track with everything. It's like getting these hype trailers out, trying to show people like the different characters, kind of reintroducing the ones they've seen with the new mechanics and everything in place, and then start showing all the different characters they haven't seen. And, you know, hopefully we'll build it that way. And, and again, just you got to give people access. You got to put the controller in their hand with a fighting game to really get that feedback. So getting to that as soon as possible and then kind of going from there with more trailers. <laughs> Last time I, I checked out the game, it felt really good. I mean, you've been shooting me over builds every once in a while when you feel it, <laughs> right? I just uh, want you to tell the audience, like, we this is like the new, like, season of fighting games coming out. We got Tekken 8 coming out. We got Street Fighter 6 dropping actually in the, you know, right now, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say like, like tonight, tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, can you explain like how it differentiates itself like from other fighters in its genre so people could kind of know what they're kind of getting into?
uh, character designers that would bring a lot of like, okay, they're like, okay, I read what you have about him and I see this design, you know, what if we do this? And, you know, just being open to, to making sure the characters, it's like, I had this vision for corrupt and these characters basically as being something like, I love the Final Fantasy and the Tales of and like JRPG genre. And it was really like, man, you know, it'd be dope to have a black lead character in a Final Fantasy type game. And so that's kind of where the direction came from with a lot of the characters is uh, I kind of want this Final Fantasy futuristic type aesthetic, you know, but uh, having more diverse characters in it, just more representative of, you know, what my life looks like. So yeah, it's um, it's been crazy seeing it evolve now and seeing Gatling kind of look like a real person. And it's just like, yeah, coming from little sketches in high school to now has been pretty crazy. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's yeah. Super cool. That that journey is uh, without a doubt inspiring many other you know uh, people in the fighting game community, up and coming individuals who maybe are seeking an entry into games. And so you know I, I'm really appreciative of you being able to share that story and, and just the arc of you know where it started to to where it is now. Um, I, I would if I can squeeze in with the time that we have left, I would love to know what's on the horizon for corrupt uh you know this year next year and and where can people look forward to catching up to those updates so uh we will uh definitely be dropping more character reveals as we go on throughout the summer uh we'll definitely have a lot of info dropping at and around evo this year so uh i don't know the exact dates off the top of my head but definitely tune in to evo if you're excited about uh what's going on with corrupt and like I said, we're just gonna do some character reveals. Then we're gonna start showing the different modes within Corrupt. And then we have to show you why it's called Corrupt. That's one thing I haven't done yet is why is it misspelled Corrupt that way? You know, that's something that we're actually gonna reveal uh, a little bit later on here and kind of ramp up to that. So yeah, just more introduction to characters in the world, the gameplay, what to expect. And then eventually we'll, we'll get to that, that uh, launch trailer and. Yeah, hopefully it's it's not too too far, but you know, won't say anything right now. <laughs> I was about to ask you about the misspelling. That's one thing I think over the years I've never ever asked you. That was like one of the <laughs> questions. Yeah, like you did that on purpose, right? <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people bring that up. Like, oh, you know, it's misspelled, and I'm like. I thought about it. I'm aware. <laughs> you know? so, yeah, you like so, get yeah. mad at me and I like spell it right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Yo, right. Come on, so, you can't this out of me. That's hilarious. Well, yeah. uh, where can we find you on social media and everything? Because we want to make sure that folks can follow you and check out the game. Yeah, definitely. Right now, uh, you can check out uh, me on Twitter at. Uh, JW underscore correlated and misspelled like how corrupt is. And uh, that'll be probably the best spot right now, uh, but working on revamping our website and everything. And we also will be dropping a comic uh, this summer as well, the first issue of it. So, yeah. That's that's cool. Definitely wish list the game, cop it when it comes out, check out Evo. Uh, thanks so much, Jesse. It's awesome to see your your progress on everything, man, that you don't quit. I think that's one of the most awesome parts about your <laughs> your hustle and to see people in the space. It's like, I think we're all like-minded in this circle. So it's dope, man. For sure. We're really hoping for you. Thank you. And yeah, it's, uh, you know, can't give up. This is this is the, the kind of industry, the world we love, you know? So it's like, I'm gonna make this corrupt game happen no matter what, man. <laughs> right. Hey, good. Thanks, good. man. Thank you. That was so dope. Now we're back at it. The Triforce is back. It was like two <laughs> off every... <laughs> it, was, it was like two offs every time. We never got to interview... <laughs> You know what I mean? I know. Right. Next time. Next time. Next time for sure. I mean, what was some of your favorite stuff that you uh, were able to communicate with the devs about? I think having Lizette come on and, and seeing someone like another black woman being in that place and starting a studio was really, really cool. And I think like her talking about like being in rooms and seeing like where you might be one 
like the only person there or just one of two was really important because I think that's what I'm experiencing in the game industry where it's just me and I'm looking for other people who look like me and who have like worked that hard. So that was really cool. But then again, all of our guests were really, really dope. Like they all brought something incredible to the showcase as they always do. Uh, past guests as well. Derek, what did you think? Who, what was your favorite moment? Uh, it's hard to have a favorite moment. I, I I always enjoy getting to celebrate like the diversity in both games and content that gets brought to the show. And so, you know, there's something special about everybody who had something to talk about. Um, I really enjoyed getting to check out Breeze in the Clouds, really enjoyed getting to talk, chat with Jesse about a corrupt and uh, seeing where games are intersecting in different mediums. And, and speaking of different mediums, you know, the Otaku Noir box, you know, was, was also yeah. really cool to chat with them. Yeah, that was really that's, cool. That's awesome. And Justin, just so you know, like you should you should tell everybody everybody needs to go and try to win one of these gaming boxes because we're gonna have some merch in it right. like we and gaming is putting some merch in this box dames for games is putting some merch in the box you don't want to miss out on this one. you really don't because like you already see no, it. there's, gonna, Style there's gonna be some dope dope stuff coming through yeah I'll, I'll tell you mine i'm i'm mad biased though i'm not gonna be playing the diplomatic <laughs> 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 game in this piece Come on, like no. Uh, no. I really like here. You're right. All of them were dope. I really liked um, Indigo because I remember yeah. when I was a younger developer, and then she's got that energy to to really bring herself and her life to to the um, to her game. Um, and you don't always you didn't you don't always often see that, and that's what it's about when you're going indie you know uh also danielle she's you know she's working on hyper light breaker and i was about to like <laughs> mess up the name but hyper light breaker <laughs> breaker at, at heart machine games and just her experience and then the studio being so cool to allow her yeah. to have her creative freedom and and express herself in the game was pretty That's pretty up. excellent so it's it's awesome to see ourselves in in these these places um in these spaces and i i can't wait to hear more about what people are, are doing you know um so that's it. We're going to be closing off the show. I'm always so amazed at the talent, of course, hard work that we get to showcase here at BVIG. Um, and we got sponsors who are who have been amazing, who've been working with us um, over the years. PlayStation, ID at Xbox. Again, Raw Fury, Razor, Wilson, Sansini, who is supporting um, our developers with legal help anywhere from incorporation to IP law, publishing contracts and more so great that's right and i want to give thanks to the, the okay, I'm, I'm gonna, i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> thank you for the baton uh thanks to the mixed team and media one media one of course they've continued to break barriers and build a foundation for indie developers and it's been an amazing journey to watch thanks to our broadcasting partners that goes to twitch ign steam and GameSpot. And of course, don't forget about that Steam event page. The mix, the mix event page on Steam is where you can learn more about the BVIG titles, buy the available games, or add them to your wish list. Wish lists are really important. Let me tell you, they help developers a ton. So be sure you add the ones that you like, or you know, add them all. Because again, they they're add all of them. Put them all in there. Buy them. Buy add them. them. <laughs> buy them. <laughs> Demos. Demos. <laughs> <laughs> while, while we're talking about buying and adding and, and all that stuff, don't forget to donate, guys. Like, grab your phone, snap that QR code. No amount is too small, and we truly appreciate it. It really goes a long way. It helps us to continue this wonderful showcase, show you awesome content, and help the developers who are creating and making their dreams come true. Also, the merch. I, I mean, I can't say enough about the merch. We are going to be expanding it. We got t-shirts. I mean, we, we, we don't have hats. We gonna, do, we gonna do everything. So make sure you're checking out the merch. And don't forget to follow us on our socials. All right, that's Black Voices in Gaming on Instagram, BVI Gaming on Twitter, and Black Wastings of Gaming on YouTube. Guys, check it out. Go to our website as well if you want to find out what we're doing next. That's blackvoicesgaming.org. Now, before I end, 
we also have to give a shout out to Netflix again because yo, what they're doing with us, this partnership is incredible. And we are so honored to be partnering with them on our first accelerator program called the Experience Excellent Accelerator. Guys, I'm